Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Painted in Color podcast. I'm co-host Lauren Brown, joined here by all of our co-hosts today, Mia Araujo, Esther Wu, and Eric Wilkerson. And today we are having a conversation about marketing and the perils of it. Now, a disclaimer at the top of the episode, if you came here for actual advice about when to post and how to post and like what kind of like platform you should post on, this is not that episode. This is an episode about our philosophies about how we approach marketing, how we feel about marketing and what it does to an artist's life when you focus on marketing too much, when you focus on it not enough. And the- On children and, you know, the dopamine hit and the likes and, uh, you know, how, how aware the company is of, or the algorithm is of pushing content that other people like in your face so that you know everybody gets that hit and you know you keep wanting more of it and more of it and i feel like the people that have gained thousands and thousands of followers uh in no time at all are you know they really enjoy that feeling they must because Mm -hmm. otherwise they'd be you know somewhere else reading a book or you know smelling flowers or something but no, they are, you know, consciously aware of uh, how many likes their image or their video or whatever has gotten, what time of day to post, you know, mm-hmm. what time, what day of the week to post. They're aware of all of it, what hashtags to use because they're thirsty. And I, just, I, I, that just all feels so exhausting when I could just be painting. But then how do you promote yourself? You know, it feels like every, every, every year there's a new way, there needs to be a new way to wave your hands in the air and say, look at me, look at me. Yeah. You know, I'm important. I'm cool. I'm cool too. Look <laughs> at me. <laughs> you gotta believe me. Yeah. I think it also shows that like, even if we're talking about like marketing per se, it's also like, why actually should, you know, people do it or not like of course yes you want exposure for your work but there's a difference between almost becoming like a personality online and marketing your skills and sets that way and then like marketing just kind of enough where it's just like product based you know where it's just like I think I think having the opposite opinion where like we are talking about like marketing but the fact that like we don't think we're that good at it (laughs) <laughs> it's like really important to talk about because like you can totally take somebody who has like you know 100k following right and they like post every other day they have like a print shop they have like you know very successful whatever side thing that they do on top of what they do and they could easily just go like, yeah you should be doing x y and z to get all the things to like you know happen for your revenue but then it's like but do you even want to <laughs> exactly like yeah it's yeah it's it's also like just even looking at it from the other aspect which is like yes you could make a youtube like you know channel of like you know become like you know ross Tran or have like a million followers i hate to just drop his name but he's the only one i can think about because <laughs> he spent so much time i like saw that follower count increase and i was like go for it <laughs> um but then that it's like hurt. yeah but then it's like do you do you need that to happen like, yeah that's not that, does that have to be yeah the, like the goal yeah um and then it's just like at that point it's like marketing should just be sustainable enough to serve you whatever you is if, if you have products or if it's just like you know buy my prints or whatever yeah well there's there's core there are online courses that teach you how to properly promote yourself online yeah and you know uh, build your online business and uh, I took it I, it was really geared toward women I feel like it was geared toward women and I was the only dude in there it was like me and one other guy or maybe two other guys but it was it was kind of tailored toward like housewives that are like hobby artists Honestly. that want to <laughs> I mean, is that fair? That's, I that's feel like totally that's fair. 100 that's totally, fair. Like, you know, check out this bouquet of flowers and how I properly photographed it on Instagram for like optimum likes. It was, and uh, yeah. I want to create a, uh, I don't know, a, a bouquet business and stuff like that. 
but it was all valid information on you know how to tailor your website, how to write a bio, how to create this online presence so that when people go to your 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 portfolio website, it doesn't feel like you are just an individual going, hey, look at my stuff. It makes you feel like you're a company, right? Yeah. It's mm-hmm. it's in-depth information about your company. It's in-depth information about you, but it's also personalized. It's pictures of you sitting in a chair, reading a book, looking all important, right? And you go, oh God, it's all, really it feels so like staged, it. but. Yeah, that's exactly what it is though. Like that's the whole point. It's like, yeah. it's a facsimile of what it looks like to be you. It's like yeah. you're selling basically the idea of what it is that you do as an artist, but then it feels so inauthentic because you have to stage it. You have to make it look like you know anything at all. And yeah. as people, or at least for, for, I can speak for me as somebody who doesn't know, like, doesn't feel like I know anything, it, it always just feels like such a lie to be able to have to fashion the image towards like, oh, like, look at what I, look at what I've done. Like, I know how to do all these things. And this is like, my creative process and this is how my studio is set up and this is how I work like as if you know it's consistent at all um right but but something else that I have noticed though on the flip side of that is that when I have posted more authentic things about myself when I have actually shared stories on Instagram about uh you know my my own fear or imposter syndrome people also resonate with that too and, mm-hmm. um, and people do relate to that because they realize that they're not alone in that struggle of feeling like it's just like all this stuff is really hard to do. And on social media, I will actively admit like, yeah, I'm bad at posting or I am, you know, like I haven't finished this piece in such a long time. I finally finished it. Like here it is, but like, this is what I had to go through. So I honestly think that for me, that image, that fake image is kind of like, I, I just can't do it. Um, something that was talked about in that course was uh, basically your core values. And, um, and I kind of like, that is like one big takeaway I had from that is like basically setting five values that you always stick to as a business person. And one of my core values is also authenticity. And so all those staging things and marketing that goes directly against it. So I'm like, well, I can just market myself authentically and be like, this is just me. I don't like to lie to people. I don't I, like, here's what I go through. This is what, it, this is what this is. And that has worked because that's me. And so yeah. like, it's, it's really easy to fall into that very glamorized looking, you know, like marketing scheme. And yeah, you can photograph your stuff. Well, like your, your art deserves to be looked at in a way that it deserves to be looked at. Like, you know, should be pretty as possible, but you don't have to make the story as pretty as possible if you don't want to. If it's authentic to you, I think that's what matters the most, honestly. But that looks different for different people. And some people do market a character and that works for them. But that's something that works for them. This is just what works for me, only from my experience. Yeah. I think the other part of, about that, though, that's that's been a bit scary to think about, especially because I'm somebody who doesn't really feel comfortable with attention in, in the sense that, like, I'm comfortable with this because we're all talking, we all have a conversation together. But if if it was just yeah. me, then it just feels like, oh, no, why is everyone looking at me? Like, I still feel that way. And to me, it's like, I want people to pay attention to the art and hopefully connect with my art. But if they don't like me, that's not part of it. You know, like I'm not part, I mean, I'm the one who makes it, but I'm not... Does that make sense? Like, I'm not part of the product. And I think that's a big thing today. It's like, you are the product, especially for content creators and influencers. And that's the part that I don't really like is that you have to put yourself out there and yes, be vulnerable and yes, be authentic and all that stuff. But when you start becoming part of that product that people are consuming, I find that a bit scary personally, especially with when people get bigger audiences. And luckily I, I'm not at this point but uh, like I've seen people just who have bigger audiences suddenly feel like they can't be honest anymore because there's so many people looking at them, right? And, and, and everyone is, is sort of judging everything they do and they kind of feel like they can't really be themselves anymore. And so what started out as being kind of an authentic thing, like here's me making this thing, then suddenly becomes like this ginormous stage that we've talked about this before, like we're not all ready for in terms of like evolutionarily speaking, we're not prepared for this much attention all at the same time or, you know, communicating with this many people all at once. And, and I'm still trying to process that personally, because 
I'm a really private person and I'm a really, you know, uh, introverted person still. And especially this past year have become more introverted than not. Um, and it's just stuff to think about, I think, before putting yourself out there and just following all these, you know, this advice that you see out there, like deciding for yourself, is this something I want though? Even if it's the thing that people, everyone's saying, this will make you money, this will get you attention. Is it what you want though? Well, that's exactly what I mean though. It's again, marketing to what's authentic for you. So for you, what makes sense is to not have your, your face at the center of what you're marketing because you don't want that. So why force that to happen if that's not what you want? So yeah. you don't have to. It's really about doing what works for everybody else. Like I don't, for me, I don't mind showing my image because I like to, you know, like a lot of my, my fashion, a lot of like my color choices or who I am is reflected in my work. So I think it, like it all makes sense together but I don't want to be at the forefront, like the, the full center. Like I want my art to speak for itself, which is fine. But I am, for me, I'm a part of that as well. So I'll cosplay my table when I'm at conventions and people will comment on that. And it's really fun, but you know, that, cause that shows through me. I, you know, I do fashion and do characters that look like me. So I'm happy to be a part of that package, but for you, it doesn't make sense. So why would you, you, you don't have to. And it's totally valid either way, I think, to be able to have that. So it's really like about what, like, what kind of marketing makes sense for you because not one size fits all for anything and marketing is, ca is counted in this. I think that's important to realize for everybody out there who's listening because I can't give any specific advice for anybody. Everybody's story is different. So like that's the only advice I would give is like think about what that means for you first and foremost and then use that as your package because when you start with an audience of nothing, you basically tell everybody who's coming in how to perceive you. And so for you, Mia, if you're telling them, perceive my art, don't perceive me, everybody comes in with that expectation because you've set that boundary already. For me, I'm like, perceive me, but perceive my art more so than me. But I am still a part of this package. That's what I'm telling them. I'm also a person who deals with this things or this thing, and I'm not perfect. So perceive that as well. I don't have to fake it if I've already told you the message to begin with. So, you know, like some people are, again, are okay with faking it, but I'm not one of those people. And I think that's fine. Yeah. I can't, I can't talk and hold my phone and talk into it and be like, Hey guys, come with me on a hike. <laughs> like, You're doing it now. I, I never want to do that. Like, I'm not, I just, You're doing I it can't. now. You're doing it now though. I know, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, I can't. Like come into uh, my studio and look at my yeah. Star Trek collection and stuff like that. Yeah, like <laughs> don't you wish you were here? Like, no, <laughs> no. Like I don't, I don't like the feel. Like I, I know I have to post online just to show it because I have like art directors and things like that that follow me. But I, I feel it feels weird. It feels uncomfortable when I go back to my phone to see if people looked at it or responded. And like, there's that, that whole dopamine hit thing, you know, like you want to see if people responded to your art and if they don't, it, it feel, it, it affects you emotionally. And I don't like that. Yeah. Um, so like, I'll go months without posting anything and just like shove it all out there and then run away from the phone or, <laughs> or, or turn the app off. Um, but I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think there's a way around it. This is, this is life now, unfortunately for, for artists uh, of all kinds. Yeah. Um, you know, if you want the world to pay attention to you or notice you for like, there's this, I was watching the news and like, there's going to be a, or potentially going to be a, um, what is that Bridgerton musical based off of these two girls that were on TikTok just like just made up their own stuff like made up songs based off of I guess content from the show and then it's like a big deal now and like I'm so out of they're <laughs> they're doing their own thing they're getting like recognized they're on the Today Show you know because of that social media presence so it's it changes lives but you have to be you have to want to invest that kind of time i don't know well yeah but do you think that they posted with the thought that they, that was ever going to happen probably not no probably not. they just did it to put it out there exactly um, yeah you know. That's they did what was fun for them yeah 
So it's, again, it's like they did something that they felt passionate about and people saw that passion and wanted to invest in it because they're like, this is marketable, actually. We can make something out of this. And so I think that we really can't control the perception that we get, like all, all, oftentimes, like we can do what we can, but we don't know when things are going to get viral. We don't know when we're going to get retweeted by Neil Gaiman, <laughs> you know? <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Like it just, like, we just put our stuff out there and hope that maybe something will happen. But most of the time we really don't expect it. It's the nature of the internet. It's so random. So random. It's so chaotic and it's scary, but beautiful. But yeah, go on Esther. I, I will say, I will say this as, as much as it can't be manufactured that like sheer dumb luck, that's not really sheer dumb luck, but you know, again, yeah. getting retreated by Neil Gaiman and you're just like, I don't even there's no like stars yeah no idea where that happened but um as someone who like posted rather consistently I did I for a while I always loved 30 day challenges so I did like sloops of like 30 day challenges um I was not as crazy as some artists that did 365 days challenges um that that was just like next level but um as somebody who did post consistently I find that if you're gonna market or if you're gonna try you know to have something to market it's one on top of everything you know have something to say and then two like you have to do it kind of consistently not necessarily like every day but it's like the algorithm benefit you know will benefit you that way because you know if you're giving more literally content and people want to engage in it then you're just creating more supply and they're just creating you know more demand and then you just feed into whatever that and then sure eventually it could lead to something and then you start marketing not just your art but like a product like let's say a book or like a collection of books or um your own story or whatever but I think it's like marketing in itself like that authenticity and genuineness has to meet some sort of like um like demand (laughs) like I don't know how else to say it like some people are fine with just having like you know being a little more disingenuine or like hiding behind like a personality or whatnot but I feel like no matter what at the end of the day it's still being consistent with what you do that also does mean if you consistently post trash that is still marketable I don't mean to I don't mean to shit talk anyone but it's also like you don't need like we know artists 90% of what we do is shit anyways that's what we think or it's trash or if you're the if you're not that artist and you think the other direction good for you (laughs) but (laughs) but it's like you know like it's anything is uh, my hot take hot take time anything is marketable (laughs) if you do it consistently enough I think it's about the connection though like it's consistency yeah. but it's also making connection and stuff that you we would think is garbage is somebody else's thing that they're like yes yeah. that speaks to me you know and, so, and for the longest time I used to be when especially when I was younger I'd be like how does this person have this many followers or how does this person make this much money and the, their art isn't anatomically correct but it doesn't matter you know like for, for whoever that <laughs> audience is they're not ju- taking their anatomy books out like you know and it's like yeah. And, and it's like, that might be my value. You know, that's what I want to hold my art to, but that doesn't mean that everybody else has to. And it's just, I think, I think the sooner you can learn that it's, it's like the less misery you will have comparing yourself to others, you know, and just yeah. trying to figure out what's the secret sauce, <laughs> how this person succeeded and you didn't or whatever. Cause I see that a lot. And it's like that, like, again, the, the minute I learned that it was so freeing and just be like, just focus on your work and what you want to make and how you can reach the audience that would connect with it the most authentic way and what you said us or to the, uh, the consistency if you can if you can consistently create this thing that you love then i mean that's half the battle right there and and the rest is just a matter of finding the audience but that's the part i don't understand it's like how to find an audience it's just because to me it just feels like it's so random but um i know some people have perfected that like a science but well I, there's the, i was actually watching or listening to a YouTube video um, about hashtagging, uh, there being a, a website that you can go to and find out which hashtags are trending, which hashtags are best for whatever it is that you are trying to promote. Um, 
at the time mm -hmm. and uh, for the maximum maximum exposure, max, maximum reach to your audience. Um, but it also came down to like doing the thing that you are passionate about, doing the thing that you enjoy, um, not being disingenuous, um, you know, not being fake, but uh, really showing that you care about whatever it is that you're putting out there in the world and then just hashtagging the crap out of it. If it says that the, the maximum is 30 hashtags, use all 30. But but the algorithm changes based off of which hashtags are trending at the time. So like you always have to be aware of what people you're, I guess, competing against for that same, whatever it is that you do, like looking at your peers. But then it also, you also have to be aware of the, the followers that, for that account, you know, and understanding that only 10% of that audience is actually seeing your work like if you've got 10,000 followers you're not getting 10,000 likes you know <laughs> you get a thousand people yeah. and I mean, and whatever the percentage time. is yeah. it's messed up yeah so so they're they're actively uh limiting the amount of the pe amount of people that follow you you know they're not all seeing your content so you you have to find medium sized hashtags that have like a thousand posts connected to it versus hashtags that have a million posts connected yeah, yeah, to yeah. it yeah right so okay i'll use uh hashtag black girl magic on a on a for a you know for an illustration but that's got three million people have used that buried. hashtag like it's gonna get buried you know? <laughs> like so but if it's something if it's a medium level one, I don't know, like Afro puffs, hashtag Afro puffs, how many people have used that hashtag, right? So it's a varying the amount when you post something guarantees that there's a range of people that are going to see it. But if you go for the maximum, if all your hashtags are, you know, stuff that's being been used a million times, 10 million times, uh, you're going to get buried in this lit yeah. from people's feeds. So Something, uh -huh. um, something important in that use of hashtag too, by the way, um, that entire statement of like 30 hashtags that literally just gave me anxiety. So it's not yeah. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I hate that so much, but I don't use 30 hashtags. What I do, however, is I look at the subcultures that are present in my art. For example, if I'm making a fashion illustration, I will tag avant-garde or I will tag like whatever style of dress I have designed, or I will tag the actual type of plant, specifically the scientific name and genus. So I can hit those plant fanatics or those mushroom fanatics. And that has actually worked really well because those subcultures will see that and they're like, oh my God. And they like want to, you know, sometimes they repost it without my permission, which is not so fun. But it, if it gets people back to my page and I'm like, you know what, like, take it down, but that was cool that people came over to me. Um, but I have seen that happen many times before. And uh, not only just on Instagram, but also um, I tried doing the Reddit subreddits and um, went to those subcultures of whatever my art was. So for example, I have um, my mushroom queen is a good piece um, that I can use as a fashion piece, as a mushroom piece, as a black girl piece, as a witchy piece, and uh, a D&D piece, fantasy. And so I posted in all those subreddits and each one of those, I think got over a thousand like upvotes at least. And so I was like, oh, like, okay, like that's interesting because like some, like, you know, those, they're talking about whatever topics, but they want content that is in their interest. And so you don't usually see art in some of these subreddits, but when the art comes up, people would pay attention to it because they're like, oh, what's this? Like, I, I like this a lot. And they, you know, they comment on that they add their likes, they, you know, they post it wherever they want to post it. But um, they're usually really respectful also about making sure it links back to you. But yeah, it's like different techniques and finding out what the niches are that are present in your art that helps you kind of like overcome the noise. Because if your art is just like, you know, anime art, it's like that there's so much noise that goes into it. But like, what's unique about you that you're putting into this work that you can actually like elevate? That's what I've had to kind of harness in my own work. And that's what I found has worked for me really well. But yeah, yeah all those hashtags, I'm like, I don't know if that's necessary. <laughs> that's really scary to me.
I mean, that whole conversation made me feel like that's a full-time job that I have no interest to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, like, I don't think that hard about it, though. When I, like, the subreddit posting is a lot. And I'll only, like, dedicate, like, a, you know, like a, you know, warning to that. But uh, just using the hashtags. It's, but the only reason I know the, the genus and everything is because I actually research the plants as I'm making the art. So it's not really any extra work after the fact on my part. It's just knowing what hashtag to put there. That's really it. I think that also, like, speaks on, like, your principles too right that marketing as we were talking about earlier how marketing is really like unique and you know individual to you and for you like you know you have this pillar of authenticity right and it speaks like through not just your artwork but the way you're even handling it you know showing it off where you're like i want plant people to look at this they get me and they'll get this yeah. right <laughs> so like it's not necessarily that like you know how to you know like if this is a secret sauce to like gaining an audience but it's like but this is the audience I would like you know to have these are like this um this combination of like those who you know like POC mm -hmm. plants you know magic illustration and maybe like a dvd you know if it deviates off to something else like okay but then like they still like oh but that's cool and then like you know that also makes it like so much easier because you're just being true to yourself you know it's not like trying to make like a personality of like oh this is this is the um this is the mushroom account right <laughs> <laughs> right but it's like but it is you know still me because like I like mushrooms yeah not like not like trying to make something out of like mushrooms <laughs> <laughs> we're <Sometimes> horribly <laughs> I love that though <laughs> like for me I only just found out like recently what my target audience was or like a big part of it at least which was you know tabletop uh you know people and board game enthusiasts like Gen Con was amazing I had no idea that my art like you know would be appealing to that audience. But once I found out, I was like, well, <laughs> I know what hashtags to use now because I'm like, well, I love these things too. So it works, it still works for me. And, um, you know, it got me work in, the, in those fields, but it just like, it's like, it was also an interest of mine. So, and I didn't even think about using that. So it's just like understanding where your target audience is or might be, or at least like seeking out different avenues until you find it. That's pretty important as well. So. I guess like as just a business owner in general, that's like the first thing that you need to know. Like if you're going to have an art business or something like it, then know who you're even marketing to. And if it's yourself, that's fine. There's other people like you out there. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes yeah. it does. Yeah. I, mean, it I have, <laughs> I have, yeah. And like, even for me, I have like the, the worst intersection, like in my opinion, because like I do a lot of environment paintings and like I love selling uh, prints of like my like um, more landscape paintings, but I also love drawing and inking and characters and whatnot. But then like it's it will it for some reason it like never like <laughs> they like never meet somewhere here, and it's just like you know four or five years later, and it's still just like come on like cross <laughs> like do this thing, and I think like on the term on um like on marketing in a more traditional sense there was a time like I think it was like maybe two or three years ago I like only did like robots uh or like mechanical stuff and that was like that like that like resonated with like a lot of people not like on not just like online but like in person they like knew me as like the mech whatever artist and like gave me you know uh, a lot more like attention and like a lot of encouragement and support for it but then I was like I I just did like maybe like two months of of, of mech drawing <laughs> like this wasn't like something you know for some artists that was like the only thing they did you know and such and I was just like it was just like that year and I was just like but I'm not gonna but next year I'm not gonna do this. <laughs> like don't get too married to this. Yeah, yeah like I uh, myself as the mech artist. <laughs> I mean, I love that. I super loved it. But also, like in the very, very back of my brain, I was just like, yeah, but I'm like foreseeing like next year this is not like maybe it was a self-fulfilling prophecy that I thought that, but it was just like I was taken back a little 
but then like I bring that up because like it was that year that I decided to look at my Instagram um account because uh, it'll tell you like the gender ratio and like because of the robots it had like went over to like 70 80 percent male and like 18 to ages like 18 to 24 and mm-hmm. I looked at that and I was just like really <laughs> like fine okay and then like now out of spite I'm going to try to like turn this not into like 70 like get it down to 50 like instant like user engagement down like <laughs> mm-hmm. and it was like for me like marketing like traditionally had always been a struggle where it was just like um that balancing act of like well I don't want to just keep making one thing and then two it was like a gender issue on my like account where it's just like I would kind of like to reach out to more people but then like the audience never wanted to be with me (laughs) so it's just like I think there's just like, like a lot of different problems that you wouldn't have thought about either until like a few years in and then when you're actually like trying to like look at your profile as a more of a like business engagement and like there are more towards like a more traditional like approach of like okay how do I actually market this to the people I want to and then all of a sudden you realize the solutions are like oh you know what this is not gonna pan out <laughs> like I've dug myself in a hole of like I do enjoy where I am but it's like Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> That's actually a really great point because it's like I feel like art is so subjective that sometimes like this this whole conversation feels a little strange because like you're trying to pin down something very specific but then again like I just wonder how people who have become really known for one thing and they keep doing it and have a really big income like it must feel scary for them to try something different because especially how long it takes to even get there and to be able to make an income But I'm like you, Esther, I don't want to be pinned down to one thing. I've never wanted to in my whole career. And it's, it's hard when people kind of get to know you for a certain visual style or a certain subject matter. And then all of a sudden you're like, but I don't want to be doing this forever. I have other interests. And Mm -hmm. then if that involves kind of like starting over with marketing and in terms of like finding a whole new audience, I think that's why it's so tricky to just sort of and I don't, you know, judge any artist for any decision they make, whether they just keep doing the same thing, because I get it, you got bills to pay. But also, I don't judge people for for not sticking to one thing, because that's your life. That's your create, you know, your creativity, you want to keep that going. And if you're just not inspired doing the same thing that, that makes you all this money, then I, I would rather you do the thing that's right for you, whatever that is. But it, that is why it's so complicated, because it's just it's just art is subjective and it's not, it's not scientific, you know, it's like, it's about how people feel and how they connect and that can change, like tastes change as well. And it's like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think that's the other thing too, where it's like, you know, if this was going to be like, whatever those charts are, like, just like choice charts and you're going down like the yes or no, I forgot what they're called. (laughs) I'm going to say yeah. choose your own adventure because that sounds like what that's yeah, like. yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, basically choose your own adventure. It's yeah. like, do you even want to, you know, a, actually like dedicate to, to marketing, right? Yes or no? No, it's just like, don't even look at the rest of the chart. Yeah. And then like, <laughs> yes, right? Then it's just like, okay, like, you know, are you marketing product, you or whatever, right? Or like, you know, and, and you have to start, you know, really asking more questions about, how are you going to approach even, you know, your perception of yourself to your audience or whatever. I think it just touches on that topic where it's so nuanced to the individual, you know, where it's just like, we're giving you advice where like, you know, coming from preferences as well and what's kind of worked for us. But then also like, yeah, you know, if you took that course on how to market, right. And you heard like this guru talk about like, if you do X, Y, or Z, right, all at the same time, you're going to get, like, popular or, like, uh, or, or a strong result from this marketing. But even that's, like, temporary because mm-hmm. it's it's based on, like, you know, like, what's actually popular at the time. Like, exactly. yesterday was definitely, okay, maybe not yesterday. It's still, like, kind of ish today, but to me, it feels like yesterday. Like, the flowers and the, like, what you're talking about, like, the the beach vibe, cottage vibe, oh, yeah. getaway vibe. Now it's like like food on TikTok. <laughs> like edits, <laughs> right? So then it's just like, are you gonna listen to that course again? That's like 
really good at capitalizing on that one moment, right? Or like the next course that's going to tell you that now you have to do reels. Now you have to like post consistently like at Tuesdays instead of Saturdays, right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's so nebulous. It changes all the time. I mean, the algorithms change all the time. Exactly. Like, yeah. I mean, we I mean we live through it many times already. Where like you know Twitter is like oh all of a sudden you have to do this, or Instagram is like you know now you have to post reels on top of whatever else and stories and all that stuff. And Facebook, you know, like if you post links, it's just a nightmare. It's just that it's always fluctuating and it's it becomes impossible to just like chase that because you have to always be adjusting and always be evolving with it and yeah. i think the another issue too like something that you touched on earlier about you being like essentially typecast is like what you end up chasing is just this idea of clout and you lose sight of your own art very frequently because you're you see what was successful and so you keep chasing what was successful mm -hmm. Um, and then like you just become that and you're like, wait, like, where's the, the artist almost gets removed from the process after a while and you just become a marketer. And I don't think that's what any of us set out to be. Yeah. And so it's really about how to smartly continue to stay along your path while trying to navigate the social media landscape. It sounds like it's impossible. It's totally not, but it's so difficult. And like, that's why I don't, that's why I personally don't like to play that game because it will it will modify my art in a way that I don't want it to go. And um, that's just not what I want for myself. It just, it's uh, so, such a nightmare, <laughs> it's so frustrating. <laughs> Social media is, is great because it's, it's, it's allowed so many people to gain um, traction who ordinarily would not have for sure. And there's a lot of ways to use the system and game the system and make it work for you. But it's, it's making it work for you. Like if it's going to bring you out, if it's going to make you depressed, if it's going to make you insecure or compare yourself to other people then it's important to determine whether or not it's actually healthy for you to be pursuing it as heavily as you know you have been or as you want to be um again it looks different for every person but mm -hmm. it can be a, it's a double-edged sword it can be very dangerous if you don't play it carefully and that's what i'm trying to figure out right now honestly like i, I don't quite know how, what my relationship is with it i want to get better i'm getting better but i'm not great at it and i'm okay with that well, I mean, it, 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 like we were just like, like me was saying, I mean, if it's, if you're introverted, if you have any kind of mental health issues, like that can be exasperated by, you know, having to try to stay on top of marketing yourself. I don't know. It's like it's just the, the anxiety around posting something. And then constantly checking and checking and doing it again. Okay, now what do I create? Now what do I create? Stand, oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. Like there's some people that are so good at it. They just, they fall into their niche and, but then they have nothing else to do. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Like, what else do you do with your time? I don't know. Some people are inclined to it. I mean, I was just with a bunch of people who were like really good at using Instagram. Like they were, but like they're taking pictures of everything and posting stories about it and like getting like putting gifts on the putting filters and everything and they would just like do it instantly they were already inclined to using it but they were they were positioned to already know how to use social media in a way that that works for them they actually enjoy using it i don't enjoy it so i don't post all the time um unless like i feel like oh like this would probably actually be fun to share with people like, I'm still trying to get, get my mind around the point of like posting stories all the time, but I'm like, oh, I kind of get it. Like, cause when you see it, you're like to snip it out of somebody's life. It's kind of fun, but I'm, <laughs> I also don't feel the need to share every little detail of my life with other people. But I think the people who do post often and consistently and well on social media, they actually, I hope that they like it. I think most of them do like it. Yeah. It's fun for them. It's not fun for us, which is why it's perplexing. <laughs> it's definitely, I feel like you have to thrive where you can. And, you know, you have the choice to change or not do it anymore. Um, I think when it becomes like so like part of a routine, that's the hardest to step or back from or change. But like, I think it's it's just like, when it comes to marketing, it's really like no real right answer. 
you know and plus like there's plenty of artists who have no online presence whatsoever Mm -hmm. or like the last post that they had is like 2009 or some shit and it's 2021 and you're just like how where you know like what have you where have you been like not even like one like birthday post like (laughs) like at the very baseline like even that like you know or like not even like a print run somewhere but you know it's interesting that it doesn't prevent them from getting work exactly it doesn't yeah it doesn't prevent them from even selling something like either like it could be that they went to this one con and it's in person it's totally not marketed or whatever they had books there and you could only get it there you know like there's plenty of times where it's just like i've never heard or you know seen this person online but like it's at like an artist alley and i'm just like well those i like those things and i will buy those things like speaking yeah. from the consumer <laughs> right point of view and it's just like there's like you know really you you can you can make the best of what you can and also at the pace that you want and then you know like again that's where this like kate you know like chaotic factor comes in where it's just like you could do it you could like have like you know one or two books instantly sell out just because your kickstarter just went viral that day yeah and it's just like is that is that marketing like yes you 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 made a kickstarter and you reposted that yes that is you know the the marketing tactic of you know show yourself but like is the viral part of, <laughs> like something that's like predict you know you know able to be predicted no it's like you have to leave room for that too whether it's like it's okay to set expectations or goals but it's also like you know like whether or not that actually happens or what you hope to happen doesn't happen etc you know those are different things that you can't account for but at the same time you can always work towards something but it's like yeah it's so it's it's so chaotic and nebulous and but it's, then it's yeah, also, yeah always changing always changing yeah. so what what we're saying now what we're thinking now what, we're, what we apply to getting our stuff out there is it going to be the same way five years ten years from now i still remember marketing yourself as an illustrator being okay you buy this thousand dollar page in a big phone book of illustrators you know, submit to some annuals, pray to God that some art director turns to page 250 yeah. and sees your art and goes, holy moly, get this person on the phone. <laughs> 20 years ago, 20, 20 years, years, ago, years ago, if we had to make this podcast video as a talk, our advice would have a hundred percent been, you should submit your, your illustration to those like serials. Yeah. Like that yeah. was a hundred percent bit like you should print out postcards print out or, or some shit with your art on it. Yeah. You you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Get like really cool branding and send it to like different agencies. Go to New York City and have your your physical <laughs> yeah. portfolio and go to go right. to them and send them stuff. Like what? And that yeah, was marketing. Different. That was hundred <laughs> percent part of marketing. That was like a quintessential to your mark to like marketing yeah. yourself yeah. now yeah. it's like if you can make a like an instagram post and it's like up there like good for you yeah. that yeah. is that's not even sarcasm that's like you you at you did it yeah. yeah like that really is still something for free you didn't have yeah, to pay a thousand dollars for some page oh my god <laughs> i wonder how those people are still in business because they i still get the emails like are they like you sure you don't want my page I'm like nope. oh wow <laughs> no they're they're you know those some of those directory magazines or books i'm sure i'm sure you've gotten the phone calls where you're just like okay. how the hell did you even get my phone number yeah no, like I I've know. changed my number like three times since I graduated <laughs> college. And how the hell? Do you, like this shit's unlisted. How are you even yes. calling me now? I just wonder why they're still calling. Like it's like it's been 13 years since I've been out of college. Like I have never done it. But I bet mean, people still use them and people probably still get work from them too. Like that's maybe how they're saying in business. So you know, we never know. There's some avenues that are invisible to us right now. Oh yeah. 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 And 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 those are cases where it's again like the individual right Mm -hmm. 
Like if you're part of a community and that community has its own like marketing things or like really popular avenues or really successful like you know exposure tactics or whatnot then of course then you know that's obviously the best course rather than like you know post on instagram or something right if like if you're you go viral on reddit your front page every day all day you know all year round then obviously like that's where you go Mm -hmm. you know like you resonate with twitch go over there (laughs) or it's not even just like restricted to like like instagram or twitter or like um whatever else is there (laughs) you know that's all i'll say that i see you you did it art discords now are a thing i you would not be saying that 20 years ago oh no oh yeah join an art discord discord wasn't a thing like even 10 years ago (laughs) yeah yeah we can talk up and down about online marketing but to this day, nothing beats face-to-face human contact. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Meeting somebody at a convention, seminar, wherever, and saying, hi, this is who I am. This is what I do. You know, telling a couple dad jokes, you know. <laughs> I mean, because honestly, you know, you could have the best online presence, but they meet you in person and realize you're a jerk. Like, or you're just so shy that you just sit in the corner and don't mingle with anybody. It's like, well, people hire their friends. I realized that pretty quickly after I got out of school. It doesn't matter how good your portfolio is. People hire their friends. And yeah, the social media stuff is great. But on some level, they're watching those stories. They're watching the interaction. They're watching all of the stuff that you post. And they feel like they're your friend. It's a weird thing. Yeah. Then they're like, yeah, let's give this person a shot. But then you could just be a jerk. Like, no, I don't feel like delivering this piece by your deadline. I'm going to give it to you two weeks later <laughs> because I want to, because I'm a celebrity, I'm a influencer or whatever. But I don't know. I just, I always feel like that's why I tell my students at some point, you're going to have to meet these people face to face. Absolutely. You're going to have to know how to deal with your clients. Like with IlixCon coming up, um, there's art directors that, sh- that show up there. And, you know, it's been fun to see, like one of the, uh, one of the art directors from, from Wizards uh, has come to that, it came to that convention in 2019, basically with the intention of recruiting, right? And this year we got to see the fruition of that trip to IlixCon in 2019, because all these uh, artists that were only showing their work in the showcase, you know, uh, part of the convention, or were just walking around showing their portfolios, were getting card art, where they're getting jobs out of it. But it was face to face contact. Okay, well, this person can paint, but are they a jerk? <laughs> so it's 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 satisfying to to know that that's not going to go away. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. Maybe they'll start art directors start sending their robot. I don't know. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like they really are two worlds though. Like uh, like being good at social media. Like there's some people that are really good at that. And then there's some people who are really good at in person. And then there's some people that are good at both or bad at both, whatever. But I think at the end of the day, like you can't just exist in one area. I think that's your point, Eric, is that that's right. you are gonna have to meet people in person. And if you're not good at in-person interactions, then just, you know, work on that in, in any way you can and push yourself and push yourself out of your comfort zone if it's not something you like to do because that's the only way you'll get better at it. And same with online, you know, it's like, I feel like I, I'm more comfortable talking to people face-to-face because they can see how you emote and all that kind of stuff. And because I move my hands a lot, you know, and I can't do that <laughs> when I'm typing stuff. <laughs> um, but, you know, like there's an awkward part of interaction for everybody in every aspect. And it's just, I think for me, the takeaway about marketing is like, yeah, it's not comfortable for me. It's not something I'm naturally good at, but I still want to try. And, and that's the only way I'll get better at it. So, yeah, and just find, like you said too, finding a way, finding what works for you and all these platforms that are available. It doesn't mean you have to do every single one. Just find the selection of things that you want to do that kind of work with your workflow and just do that. So mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. Tying it into like what, you know, what your whole business is like, what, you know, how do you want to market yourself? Do you want to be a studio artist? Do you want to be somebody who's independent? Do you want to be a freelancer? Like all these things also are affected by the type of marketing that you even do. 
Um, so you have to know like what works best for your actual career path for somebody who works in a studio, like how, you know, like how are you going to interact with other people who would potentially get you into another place or just be friends with people who work in your industry? How do you present yourself in person when you have to go to, you know, game developer nights or when you go to different conventions or, you know, whatever it is. Um, there's like all these avenues that are out there and it looks different for each different career path. So um, it, it sometimes takes some research or just takes some talking to other people who have been in the industry before and, um, and understanding like where you can go with what you have. So yeah, that's all really important too. As somebody who's a drifter between all of them, <laughs> I can say it is absolutely very interesting, <laughs> but I've had to, I've had to definitely get good at the in-person part of it. Um, and I'm try again, trying to get better about the social media aspect of it, but I've been lucky because people have noticed me for doing this show as well as doing things for my studio. Um, so it like, it worked out even though I'm terrible at social media. So like cool, but it's not going to work for everybody. You know what works for you. Yeah. I cannot edit. I mean, I can, but I just, you don't, oh man, videos and video editing and editing and just like, if my like mouth depends on it, like I must eat and I must video edit, then I will maybe be more enthusiastic for it. But like, I'm definitely one, like I sound, I sound so boomer about it where I'm just like, no, no, I will not make a video. I'm going to post a JPEG, a JPEG, maybe make it a GIF, but it will be a JPEG first. And you know, that's like the, that's the end of my marketing, right? Like, am I going to make reels? No, maybe not now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like and then when or people who do do that as part of their marketing you know like and now this is more or less talking about like you know what's what's kind of popular now for you know the the tips and tricks and it's just like i'm a hundred percent willing to sit this one out personally speaking i'll wait until whatever the next one is <laughs> uh i'm i'm so behind that uh i'm still trying to figure out twitter like Twitter I mean, baffles me. Still. <laughs> Twitter is the whole thing. Yeah, it's scary. Twitter's scary. Yeah. I've been recently been very lucky on Twitter. The hash the drawing mall black hashtags and like the you know the other ones that come around. Mm -hmm. I definitely recommend using those um as a means of promotion because people actually do look at those. People actually do notice. Um I can tell you that as a hiring manager, I have looked at those hashtags before. So drawing while black. Yeah, hashtag drawing while black. Abel uh, Hayford uh, started that hashtag. Yeah, I never started. heard of that one. Okay. Yeah, she's awesome. She is awesome. She won won an award like a at the concept art awards for it. it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it's definitely a good hashtag. There's visible women. There's uh, I mean, there's hashtags. I think on Twitter for pretty much like most like marginalized communities of artists, and then also just like your subject matter even if you're not a marginalized artist, like you can like, you know, you have like stuff about mechs or you have stuff about like animal art or, you know, different things like that. Like they will just come around. So if you can um, observe that and see what works for you again, it's something that it's a vehicle to be used, but the nuances of Twitter, like people are like LRT, like something retweet. I don't know what that means. <laughs> hey, can I, can I, can I ask you a question about Twitter? Yeah. All right. I mean, you can feel free to edit this part out if you want to, but is yeah. there does does is there really a black Twitter? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Where is oh, it? I should have said yes, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, you black, it's black Twitter. You just gotta put like you. what? <laughs> you just follow people, right? Yeah, yeah. You people, and you got you found black Twitter. <laughs> but, so okay, so it's just like I think black a friends website. on Twitter. <laughs> it's just black. You follow black people on Twitter. You that's black Twitter. It's lit. Black Twitter is oh, it's like a subcategory or some shit that like I wasn't able to find. I'm like, do I gotta get it invited? Is this a group? No, it's just black Twitter. Like you just it's gotta just follow. follow. Yeah. yeah. I don't understand Twitter. <laughs> I mean, I probably, should, I probably should have asked you that on like on the side. <laughs> I'm like, how do I get in? Me and definitely do not edit this out of the show. This is how <laughs> This is I'm just what I'm saying. I'm like, I don't understand the platform. So I'm like, people, I see people on Facebook like, yo, Black Twitter is lit today. I'm like, I don't, where? I want to follow this. Yeah, if you if you follow the people who are in Black Twitter, then you'll get more, you'll get like kind of like um, what Twitter will do in the algorithm is that they'll put posts that are similar to what you're already following on your page. 
And so then you follow more people and that's how it just, you, now you're following a subsection of black Twitter. Okay, good. Good to know. All right. Cause some of the stuff that I see is just so hilarious that yes. I'm like, I, I, I need to see this thread from the beginning, not a <laughs> screenshot on Facebook. Right. Oh, but all right. Good to know. Thank yeah. you. Oh man. Yeah. There's a lot of subsections. Yeah. I mean, I think at any, um, really any part of the internet like that, like any social media platform does have subsections of it. Like, you know, black Instagram, black Facebook, um, oh, black TikTok, or like, there's like, they're like, oh yeah, you need to follow world building TikTok. I'm like, that's a thing? Like world building TikTok? That yeah, like awesome. yeah. You, wow. you, you find a sub community for anything that you're interested in on any Good to know. Yeah, there's millions of people out there. So moral of the story, internet is chaos, have fun and be safe. <laughs> The best God bless. You. Yeah. Post when you want to post, y'all. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Like, uh, my partner, like, for a very long time, posted at night, and I mean, like, not like eight p.m. I mean, like eleven p.m. to twelve. Did that work? And I was like, dude, you need to post like at like eight a.m. at least or whatever. And he's like, why? I'm like, do you see that? Like, the people and followers are like literally the other side of the world like like i mean like it's like russian text russian comments and stuff like that where i'm just like i mean you're you're getting a following yeah sure but like you're in the states like are you going to move like will you operate in this time zone like you know so it's like you you could theoretically post you know whenever you want you will build an audience like you know posting consistently again revisiting that like and especially at the time it's like global now really mm -hmm. but at the same time it's like that also means just be mindful too yeah. you know if you want to build that community like if you're a night owl and you want to be with a night owl committee like you know go ahead and do that but you it's just it's just do what fits best for you yeah and like you can always change it too like it I think it took a few nights for, for my partner to like, you know, switch over to like, I will post now at 9 a.m. So I will get, you know, like more people from this, like, you know, certain areas to look at. It. <laughs> uh, that's, that is an interesting. <clears throat> that's an interesting that you said that because um, I, I, for some reason, I don't know why, but oh, I see a lot of illustrators posting new stuff on a Tuesday. Like what is so, What's so special about a Tuesday? I think because some art director said that that's when they like to see new stuff. And then everybody just said, okay. And it just rippled across our little small niche of art. But I see people posting art on a Thursday. I'm like, oh, did, did you not get the memo? Like, what the hell are you doing? It's Tuesday, you idiot. <laughs> like, <laughs> Tuesday midday. You want to make sure she's at her desk watching this stuff. Oh what are you God, doing? I don't even pay attention to that. I just post oh, whenever, yeah. like, several really... months apart and just whenever I want. <laughs> I've, I've seen lectures on this uh, at conventions. Like, well, I like to see stuff on a Tuesday. I like, got it. <laughs> Noted. But uh, I'll, post, I'll post something on Instagram around about 6.30, 7 o'clock at night sometime like two o'clock in the morning the other side of the world has woken up <laughs> and they're seeing it so like a lot of reactions are happening at night while i'm asleep and it's trippy i'm like did they not get the memo either like <laughs> what, what's going on here i will say i do i have like a personal like personal like moral standing with that which is i will never post on a sunday because you should not be on social media on a sunday friend don't look at my shit yeah, exactly <laughs> go go fucking go get a coffee go like walk your dog go yeah. you know like, look at something yeah yeah that's Breeze just like out and touch grass yeah, yeah. Don't <laughs> touch the grass just yep. the grass. lamp posts don't do that COVID. <laughs> Brown <laughs> personal Sunday. <laughs> that's amazing. Go outside, people. <laughs> yeah, that's like that's my true. own thing. But that's really funny about the Tuesday thing because yeah. I, I remember hearing that too. 
and it was like a disproportion disproportional amount of people posting on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Yeah. And then like nobody posted on Friday. Yeah. Like like was, nobody like, gave a damn about the internet for on Monday, <laughs> Thursday, Friday. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't squeeze it in there on Tuesday or Wednesday, it's not getting seen. Oh, oh definitely. Friday. Never a Friday. Never on a Friday. But <laughs> we are definitely making fun of this. We this are. The viewers <laughs> who are listening. I promise you this is yeah. nothing. This is not actual advice. This is, in fact, shitting on an advice that I think is like a decade, oh, a decade yeah. old. <laughs> you know what, it's like a global audience. Like everybody from around the world is seeing it. Like this advice right. is catering to a few time zones, not all. Right. Yeah. Have right. some imagination. Right. If everyone's posting on Tuesday, your stuff is going to get drowned in there anyway. So post on Wednesday, damn it. Like, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Be different. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Man, this episode, like, <laughs> we could probably like have like real advice, but I don't feel like giving real advice. <laughs> I think it's partially because whenever you hear somebody say, like, we'll give you real marketing advice, it's like, almost always a sham like i don't know about you guys but for me like whenever i come across those it's just like you don't sound right like well, yeah. it's like well, this it's their sense. experience you know yeah. it's like it worked for, for them, them. But it's mm-hmm. not gonna work for me. It's like if my art doesn't look like you know something somebody could hang in anyone's room, you know whatever it is. Like I don't know, yeah. it's, and it just automatically doesn't apply, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so. And then and then they're always like usually being the marketing gurus that they are, also promote whatever that they're trying to promote. Like yeah. they'll get advice, but really the real advice is in a book. Mm-hmm. Or so a workshop. I feel that, yeah, or a <laughs> workshop. So I feel yeah. like it's well, even if we're saying what well, it sounds not like advice i think it's it's the other part of like an un, unspoken thing where no where you know when people talk about marketing everyone just kind of falls in line to like oh yeah you got to do like x y or z like get the memo to post on tuesdays but in reality it's just like everyone has a different thing of course if you look at successful people like you know and you get how they over the course of whatever many years or time periods etc how they've accumulated and become like the successful either personality or product that they have or are it's like yeah sure you can try following that is that gonna work not sure but that's the real that's like the real honest like thing that we're trying to cover here yeah where it's just like yeah you can have a you can set yourself a plan or a goal like a year to be able to like make a book right market up towards that have like a kickstarter Mm -hmm. like a game or whatever but at the same time, that's no, that's not just like marketing. Ignore the motorcycle in the background. <laughs> You're fine. You're totally fine. Yeah. yeah, like it's, you know, that's it's it borders into the like, do you have the, you know, dedication and the consistency and the time and the, you know, like the capacity to do that versus just like, yeah, if you just like it sounds so cheap to say just post on Tuesdays every day with like a portrait and then you'll instantly be like. Like, I don't know. Yes, you'll you'll be an influencer. I mean, sure, somebody can do that, and maybe that will happen, but that's not necessarily a guarantee. Which also, I think, yeah, because yeah. it also so largely depends on like what you're actually posting. Like, it, yeah, you can try the same technique and be three different people, and like each person's going to get a, comp- a wildly different result. Like, it's not going to be the same for anybody. Yeah, yeah, and right, 2020. Right. right, and we we talked about the the fact that it's got to be consistent content. Yeah. So if you're, if you're doing one type of thing and you're gu- building up an audience and then you start posting vacation pics to break it up, you know, that might not resonate. Or if you're paste- posting pictures of your food, just all of a sudden it goes from art to like your steak. Like, I don't, why do I, how, like, why do I, why is this in my feed? Like, <laughs> so then you start losing people and you're like, oh, okay. So I guess they didn't like my steak. <laughs> but, again depends on who you are because if yeah. you're like some super super quirky personality that posts all kinds of random stuff that could be the thing that becomes the draw like it's, it's it is so unique to each individual but it's so arbitrary it's yeah, so if I, I mean if i post pictures of my physical actual plants my audience might like that <laughs> yeah the same but if i ever if i ever if you <laughs> ever see me doing one of these do yeah <laughs> do it you get- like, oh no, he's a pod person. Someone got like, him. Yeah. 
<laughs> like showing you do, doing the the 360 around the studio this is where i do my work <laughs> hey guys this, is, <laughs> this will be remembered Cut. and uploaded on youtube eric and in 10 yeah. years 10 years find, yeah. yeah if we find you doing that welcome to my studio <laughs> eric wilkerson it's we have it yep yeah. <laughs> Eric Wilkerson, welcome to my space. <laughs> he, yeah, he, he drank the Kool-Aid, you fake ass. Yeah, <laughs> like, sold out. <laughs> yeah. The team, get him. <laughs> yep. Drag you out of the basement. It's like, no. Um, We're taking I'm, away. I'm on my way. I'm <laughs> like, <laughs> I just got to get the right phone and maybe a little, little selfie stick or something. Oh, oh God, if I, if I buy a selfie Bring stick. Light. A oh, ring light. Oh, yeah. 2022. What have I become? <laughs> yeah. What if I become? That's useful. <laughs> God. Oh man. All right. Do we need to end this? Probably. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know what this was, but I hope you got something out of it. Yeah. If you suck at marketing, don't feel bad. We suck at it too. So. This, yeah. This, this is, is totally fine. Quint- yeah. This is the quintessential quintessential video to to watch slash listen to <laughs> about yeah. your concern about marketing if you really <laughs> like wow they don't know a damn thing oh, I was still it. that's okay <laughs> it's chaos and nothing matters it's fine yeah you're like honey what did they have to say nothing <laughs> <laughs> most what makes you happy and try to do it consistently good luck like you know like that's all i can really give yeah again do what's authentic to you do what feels good to you and people will see that you feel good and they will like that and they'll follow you because of that so yeah be true to yourself and have fun don't stress out too hard about it marketing is a trip but you know we're not pointing to the corners like five tips and doing this (laughs) business nope what kind of show this is (laughs) (laughs) oh man there we go. All right. Bye. Everybody. Bye. <laughs> Get out of here. Go touch grass. Have fun. <laughs>